Howdy. So my latest article went out into various magazines in the last uh, week or so. And it's the part two of my um, vision, future and revolution series that I'm doing. Talking about all elements of the sport and how, one, it needs to change and some of the things that we must do to change it in addition to some of the other things that we perhaps should be looking to do to enhance things. Once again, I've had some uh, pretty good feedback on the article. I've had a fair share of emails and uh, phone calls and messages on Facebook, people uh, messaging me. And one particular call yesterday was from a guy called David Lloyd. He's a 70-year-old guy. He's been uh, keeping pigeons for the last 40-odd years. And he was telling me that he cannot get into a club that's five minutes away from him. Why? No reason. That No official reason. If somebody in the club says they don't want him in, he doesn't get in. And so then, at the age of 70, to keep flying and to keep racing, he needs to do a 42-mile round trip to a club that will let him in. And so he's lucky that he's in a club but he's not in a local club that's literally five minutes away. How screwed up is that? Now, David, back in the day, used to be a good flyer and ultimately used to beat people most weeks. But this is indicative of people's mentality. Like I've said before, and I'll say again, if, if in any area of life I get beaten and somebody keeps beating me, I will figure a way of being able to compete with them and hopefully one day beat them. But ultimately you have clubs that are not allowing people in because they're scared of the competition. And as I said in my article this last week, there has to be something changed about this. It's a pretty simple thing. If somebody wants to join a club they should be allowed to join no matter what unless that person is proven to have uh, not been of good character directly related to racing pigeons people's past cannot be bought into it you know we all have a past but if they're proven to have defrauded or cheated in some way with regards to the sport of course that's an issue that needs looking into but if that's not the case, it doesn't matter who they are, how good they are, how bad they are. I mean, of course, anybody that's bad at flying always gets in. But it doesn't matter how good they are, they should be allowed into that club, no matter what. And this BS of clubs changing boundaries to keep people out. And I mean, what kind of mentality do we have that clubs change boundaries to keep people out or, and members don't want people in clubs because they keep winning. What kind of failed, small-minded mindset is that? You've got somebody that comes in and they keep beating you, you do whatever you can to try and compete with them and one day beat them. Why would you not do that? And I think it's something that needs changing. Now, as I've said before, um, you know, this is an issue. Like Johnny's just said, RPRA should make a rule that the club nearest to them should get in. Absolutely. If, you, if you've got a local club, and like we said, that you've, you've not got any <clears throat> issues directly related to pigeons uh, that you've, you've, you've had in the past, you should be allowed in. And it's like this guy David was saying yesterday, the rule should be, everybody's accepted into a club on a 12-month probationary period or whatever and that's it now the problem you've got here and I don't know specifically about this is only what I was told by this guy yesterday that um, this was tried to be changed and for some stupid reason at RPRA board level was refused and we're in a dying sport with numbers falling year on year. And even on a weekly basis in, on Facebook, you can see people talking about giving up. They've had enough of all this rubbish, whatever it may be. People's individual circumstances may be what makes them think like that. 
and yet the RPRA board, apparently, again, I'm not specifically aware of it, um, went against the new suggestion that anybody should be allowed in the lo their local club. Why, why would they do that? And I just think it stinks of a mindset and a mentality that's anti-winning. Maybe it's a bigger picture. Maybe it's a bigger social picture. Maybe here in the UK, we don't like winners as much as we should do. But like I said, as far as I'm concerned, anybody that's in a club, that wants to go to a club that isn't of bad character within the sport, people shouldn't be judging people on their past. Why would you not let that person in? And it's just one of the things that stink about the organisational structure. I'm not surprised by it, Ian, at all. Not surprised at all. But because it's been like that for years. But... It should change. How unfair is it that a top flyer is not allowed into a club because people are worried about him winning every week? If you're not winning, up your game. I just think it stinks and I think something needs to change. But again, like I said in my article, how are you going to change it? How are you going to change it? Funnily enough, Ian Evans has just joined this broadcast. And like I was saying to this guy yesterday, David, the trouble Ian Evans has got is, as CEO of the RPRA, normally a CEO can make decisions and act upon things for the interest of the business or the organisation. Trouble is, anything Ian pretty much tries to implement has to go to that board. And why would a board deny a new rule or whatever it may be that says any member that wants to join a club should be allowed into that club unless they've been pro proven to be somebody um, not worthy from a point of view of their actions or fraud based or cheating based. If, if none of that applies, which let's face it, 99.9% .9 of the time it would apply, that person should be in. I, I had it myself when I had my kind of false start uh, to fly again locally in my local club, I had all kinds of rumours about me and I essentially was interviewed, apart from the, the spotlight shining on my face, I was essentially interviewed and I had to put my case forward why, based on what these people had heard about hearsay about me, why I should be allowed in. Now they allowed me in, which and, and for, unfortunate that the secretary of that local club was a really nice guy and a very well-rounded guy. Um, I, I just don't get it. Um, no, that's what I've just said, Ian. Uh, well, I'll come back to you in here. Michael says, this happened to brother or partner uh, as they bought his best birds. I don't quite know what you mean, Michael. Just say that again. Uh, and with regard to what you just said, Ian, with the greatest respect to Ian Evans, what... But what has his remit? Has he got genuine power to make changes? No. I think he would agree... I think he would agree himself that he hasn't because, like I said, in any normal commercial organisation, the CEO, the book stops there, they make the decisions, they, they act towards the greater good of the organisation. And that's it. That is not the case in the RPR8. He can suggest as many revolutionary and future forward-thinking things as he wants, but pretty much, from what I understand... Every one of those decisions has to go to those 22 people on that board. And, again, I don't know any of them personally. This isn't, I know from what I've been told there are some good people on that board. There's 22 people on there and some of them are not necessarily progressive. And let's go far as to say pretty much stuck in the past. And probably do make their own rules up, Wayne. Um... And why you've got that situation that every major decision has to be passed by that board, he, Ian Evans, hasn't really got that much power. And certainly if I was a CEO, I would be... Well, I wouldn't do the job. I couldn't do it. If the CEO uh, of an organisation makes the decisions and then having to go to a board of 22 people about the smallest decision, I wouldn't do it. Um, no, Ian, I have never seen... The 22 people, I've never met them, and I'm sure some of them are very nice. I've been told some of them are good, genuinely good people 
uh, interested in the interests of the sport. But also, some of them are not. And Ian's just said, I don't have any power to change rules, only the membership. I asked the rules committee to change the rules. They put forward a proposal which is voted against by the membership. Now there you have a problem, again, outside looking in from what I see. The membership are voting on these rules and specifically to this issue that we're talking about, i.e. clubs should let anybody in. Well, there's the problem because a lot in that membership will not vote for people that win to come in. And while we have this kind of completely screwed up BS situation, things ain't changing anytime soon. Now, I don't know if it happens all around the world like this, um, but here in the UK, we have major issues. And while we have ridiculous issues like this and ridiculous rules like this, things ain't gonna change. And I just think it, it certainly says far more about these people that don't want people in clubs than it does about the people that can't get in. It's pretty ridiculous. His wife wanted to join the club and they thought they'd be my brother's birds. So they didn't let him in. Again, ridiculous situation. Uh, they would average about 70 year olds, dinosaurs, Ian says. Again, nothing wrong with being 70 years old. I've actually heard in the last few weeks from people responding to my article i had an 80 year old guy the very first guy that called me when my first article came out incredibly forward-thinking guy um the age is not the issue it's the mentality of the people that are there and it just so happens that they seem to be older um you know i i know some my dad's 73 and he's he's a quirky character but he certainly wouldn't be making decisions and rules on a board like that. It's killing the sport. Falcons and clubs are not flying in. I mean, yeah, the birds of prey is another issue. Like I said on a Facebook post this week, apparently the eagle owl is a predator to falcons and hawks. Why don't we start keeping eagle owls? Because from what I know, and I may, be, I may stand corrected, and if I am wrong, then I apologize, but from what I know, the eagle owl is not a predator to a racing pigeon. So if an eagle owl is not a predator to a racing pigeon, it is to how orcs and falcons, why don't people start keeping these eagle owls? No age is the issue. Well, maybe it is, Ian. Maybe it is, but you're not 70. And I know from speaking to you many times as we have, you are older than me and you don't have that mentality. So it just so perhaps what we mean then is it is the age of the people on that particular board is the issue. Again, I've been told there are certain good people on there. But why you've got so many people on the board, I cannot, I would love to know, I would love to ask the board why that decision was made not allowing people to be able to automatically join clubs um, unless there's something very seriously wrong. I would love to know why. Uh, Christopher, people need to move with the times. Dying sport needs more members and rid of these five member clubs merging all feds into one club and then all feds into sections. Yeah, I think there needs to be some consolidation, Christopher, in things. Um, I can see it going to bigger clubs and the practicalities of smaller clubs. Like you say, there's a lot of clubs. The only RPRA meeting I've been to was was there and there's, a, there's three or four clubs disbanded because they just haven't known any members anymore. It makes sense to have bigger clubs, personally I think, bigger clubs, uh, more resources available and, and, and maybe them al uh, am amalgamate. So uh, that uh, appears that your uh, suggestion, Christopher, is, is a good one and people are suggesting it's a good one. Um, five member clubs merge all feds into a club and all feds into sections. Pretty good idea. Ian says, the RPRA Council are representing the membership. They're elected to vote by the membership of the region. But the trouble here, and I haven't read your full thing, Ian, is they can never be voted off from what I understand. Once they're on, they're on. There's another issue. You don't get commercial type boards where board members can't be voted off. And that needs to, be, that needs to happen. They should have three or four year terms and then people uh, be, get re-elected. You can call them dinosaurs, but 
is with the membership. Go to the regions and put forward your votes. There's no point criticising on here. Engage, engage, engage. Fair point, Ian. Um, but I think specific to this issue, the membership is the issue, isn't it? The membership, a lot of the mem, not all, uh, a lot, uh, some of, some members that are voting for these things or, or or pushing these things forward don't want people to be able to join clubs without any um, approval type system. So Ian's saying, go to the regions and put forward your votes. I'm not a member of a club. I've been told that I can join the National Flying Club and that gets me to be able to vote on things. Maybe I need to do that. Uh, Michael says, some of these members don't want people in clubs. It's personality who rules clubs. Chris is spot on with his comments. Keeping your gals is not the answer. Waste of time and money. They will be called and anyone found releasing them will be f under 5,000 and sent to prison. So you're t so we're say what you're saying then, Christopher, is... If I kept an eagle owl and I allowed that eagle owl to roam free, just as many falcon, um, falconry people do, that releasing the eagle owl would potentially get me fined five grand and sent to prison. Well, if that's the case, how screwed up is that? Should have read the vote as a membership direct. It's apathy from membership that means change doesn't happen. There you go. See, the idea that this this uh, the RPRA is is ran from the ground up and the membership is in theory a great thing. But in practice it's not because half of the members don't participate. Half of the other half are anti-growth, anti-forward thinking and the other half get downvoted. Again, simple way of looking at it but I think that's the problem we've got. Oh, they're elected annually. I didn't know that, Ian. Huh. I did not know that they're elected annually. I didn't know that. I thought they were on there forever. Okay, well, that's an interesting thing. So then why... Now, I need to think about that. If they're elected annually, that's interesting. Um... reading more comments Ian seems to think that's a waste of time listen we've sparked a debate which is what it's about but like I said the original thing was a member not being allowed into a club for no viable reason other than that they may be winning is ridiculous in my humble opinion and I've had a few calls like that and it's quite sad uh, so Chris says you'd uh, find if all pigeons in the northwest went up against the north, went up to go to the southwest, and etc. You have more. You would have losses and realize hawks are not just the majority of the losses. <sighs> More like feed the hawks. Okay, Christopher. All right, guys. Well, again, the trouble with these things is I feel sometimes when I've talked about these things, it's about carrying it on and trying to figure it out. Now, there's obviously a debate going on here if change can ha happen. And uh, Ian's saying it's about voting and, and, and acting on that. And others are saying not. But ultimately something needs to change and why is it not one member one vote what what's that what is so difficult about it not becoming one member not one vote you're in the hot tub christopher it's a hard life why is it not one member one vote <laughs> don't get it okay so moving on real quick i've got some other things coming up i um I've been busy with other stuff and planning a few other things in enhancements to Racing Pigeon International and Racing Pigeon Network. I am at the moment looking at um, being able to do something to offer another service similar to Libline and uh, I'm pretty busy talking to a lot of people and I'm really, uh, really enjoying it. I've got lots of plans that I'll be talking about 
in future. Um, I'm going to wind it up because the dog's getting bored of me standing around after we've just been on our walk. Um, catch you soon. Keep good. Keep being lucky and keep flying. Catch you soon. Bye.